Today is a tour of the Smart Woodshop. Okay, we've done this before, but it's time for an update. One, I have gone through thinning and getting rid of tools, and so it's time to show you how things are organized. We're also going to do a deep dive. So we're gonna take a little longer, we're gonna go through everything. My hope is that I'll answer so many of the questions I get emailed and asked in the comments, and you can then go through this video, watch it one time through, and then if you have specifics, you can go back and look at those particular areas. So make notes at the time as you're going through this so that if you wanna find out more about what's in the drawers or how our drawers are set up or anything like that, you'll be able to go back to it. So the changes that have gone on, if you've been following along, is I have gotten rid of a lot of tools. In short, I'm guessing about eight to 10 tools. I'm making up a list of the ones I think I'll actually need and use. I'm going from corded to cordless. Now not everything corded is gone, but a lot of the things are. And so some of those tools I've gotten rid of, but I haven't replaced yet with the cordless. Now I'm going with all DeWalt FlexVolt. That's the 60 volt that'll go down to their 20 volt with the same battery. I got rid of all of my cordless tools that weren't either Festool or DeWalt. And I only have one tool that's a DeWalt uh, cordless at this time, and that's the, the reason I chose DeWalt. The other ones are great as well, but I chose that because my trailer valet, one of my most important tools in having a trailer, is the trailer valet, and it is set up to be run with the, the big 60 volt uh, DeWalt cordless uh, angle drill. So I do have that tool, and I'll be buying other tools now that will use the same battery system. And I'll talk about those maybe a little bit today, but I'll talk about them a lot more as I make up the list and start to pick them up, and then I'll show you the tools I chose and why. But those are future videos. This is about the Smart Wood Shop. So let's start with the general idea of the Smart Wood Shop. I'm in this space here. It's a, uh, almost a thousand square feet, but this isn't my shop. My shop is right there. It's the smart wood shop. Wherever that trailer is, that's where my wood shop is. With this trailer and the way it's set up, I can build a house. I can remodel a house. I can add on, do additions, build decks, uh, remodel kitchens, put in flooring, whatever I need to do. Now, not all of the tools are in the smart wood shop this time. My table saw is against the wall over there. That will go in the aisle when I'm moving the trailer around. And then I also have a bin of paint tools uh, down below one of the larger ones. And that has my pump and all in my, my coveralls and mask and ventilator, all those things, uh, rollers, all that stuff is, is in there. And then I have one other paint bin, this one here, and this is my Titan HVLP. So those two go on wheels and they will roll in the middle as well. So they all fit, all the tools that I have will fit in the trailer and easily transport. So the trailer is a mission trailer. This is a high quality trailer, lighter weight. It's all aluminum. So the framing of it is, the structure of it is aluminum. Um, as well as the aluminum skin like most of them have. And then I have the racks on the top. There is a ladder that bolts on the side and it stays permanently off, off the uh, nose of it. But because of the height of the door here, uh, I was one inch uh, too tall. So I had to pull the ladder off, unbolt it. There were six bolts and I just laid it on the top for now so that I can um, get the trailer in and out. I'm not taking it in, out, in and out as much now. I'm in transition with what I'm doing, as my followers know. And so it's pretty much kind of just sitting in here right now. And hopefully the next space I have, I'll have a little bit taller garage door. So again, it is an 8-foot wide, 12-foot long trailer with a V-nose. So the V-nose adds on to the space that I have without really making the trailer any bigger because you got to have the tongue anyway you know, to be able to jackknife and the things that, you know, you, you, you know, the, a shorter tongue, obviously you'd hit the trailer. So the, the tongue is as long as it's going to be regardless. So they just build out the V nose on top of that space. So I get a 12 foot plus in a 12 foot 
trailer. It's a tandem axle, so it'll carry more weight. These are a pair of 3,500 pound axles. Uh, if I were going to order a new one, I'd go ahead and get the uh, 5,000 pound axles, take it up to 10. Uh, I had that option. I'm not sure why I didn't do it. Again, I have the uh, racks on the top and there's a plank, an aluminum plank that runs all the way across and then over to where the ladder hooks up. So I can climb right up the ladder and you've seen me do this in other videos and jump up and climb up there and um, take down my ladders which are strapped down or pump jacks and I have my uh, wall jacks, my Proctor wall jacks up there right now as well. I pulled the smart wood shop with an F-150. Uh, I think mine's rated at around 10,000 pounds. They vary. I think some of them go up to like almost 12,000 pounds. But uh, the newer F-150s, mine's a 2014, the last year before they went to the all aluminum. And uh, with the, the rear end that I have and the transmission, the manual in it tells me that I have more than enough to tow this. And, and, uh, and when I do tow it, I don't even notice that it's there. I definitely don't need uh, an F-350 or 250. I ordered this trailer to be exactly what I wanted. It wasn't off of the lot. So one of the things that I uh, never use is the side entry door and they almost all come with that. I've always had them and I end up uh, drilling holes and bolting them shut and then still putting a lock on them. So no need to bother uh, having the side door and that's just me and again, Everything I tell you about here, uh, understand that I'm showing you what works for me and I'm just hoping there, you know, if you love the whole thing and you want to copy it exactly, you know that I have plans I offer, but the plans are very modular. You can adjust to fit different widths of trailers, different lengths of trailers. It'll work in box trucks, it'll work in vans. It's, it's a very modular design, the cabinets. And we'll talk a, a little bit more about that as we go through the tour. I choose to use a ramp door as opposed to the barn doors. I've had trailers with the barn doors. Uh, they, they tend to get in my way. I used to hang cords and hoses on them so they, they seemed like they had some functionality. But overall, I like the ramp door. I like folding it down and I like the access in and out. It's not a material hauler. It is a wood shop. It's a tool trailer. Uh, so hauling materials is reserved for the top of my pickup truck. When I go to the lumber store, I don't have my trailer with me anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's long enough to haul 16 foot goods or whatever. Occasionally I'll throw in some plywood in the middle, uh, but again, I usually don't have the trailer with me when I go to the lumber yard. The Smart Wood Shop is an evolution. I've had many trailers, many trucks, many vans over my almost 30 years of being a general contractor. I've built over 200 homes and done thousands of remodels. And many of those remodels were larger projects than even building a home from scratch. So done a lot of big projects and it's, it's over time that this whole concept has evolved. One of the things that I wanted to do is I recognized that over time, my tools change, the location, how I store my tools change, and I wanted it to be modular. I don't want specific fitted spaces for tools. I want them to fit well, but I want things to be adjustable. Modularity or adjustability comes in many forms. I have these cubbies, which is one of the oldest designs that I have. It is a series of slots that quarter inch plywood fits in and I can move them to fit different size tools. And if I decide that I want to put a larger tool down here, then I can just simply move these over. Now they're held in place with this uh, three quarter inch strip of plywood. It's screwed down. I just simply unscrew that, set it aside, and then I can move these around to adjust sizing. So it's very modular to fit whatever my tool uh, situation is at the time and currently it's changing so this will be an opportunity once I get my newer tools I'll make adjustments to, uh, to these. Additionally this lip does another uh, performs another main function and that is the passive restraint. I set my tools in here and that keeps the tools from falling out in transport. I don't use any kind of bunging or locking or closing doors uh, part of my efficiency is that when I need a tool, I can see it, I can put my hands on it, and I can pull it out and use it. And that is critical 
in what I've uh, come to enjoy over the years so that when I need to do a job, I can easily grab the tool. You can see that with the exception of one or two boxes, I have none of my tools in boxes. They slow me down. I mu would much rather grab out uh, my domino and take it and use it than have it in a box. Same with my nail guns and drills and all of that kind of stuff. For me, uh, a box adds time to the job that I need to open, you know, pull the box out, open it up, get the tool out. In addition, I estimate that without scientific measurement, that it takes about 30% more space to store a tool than if I just have a cubby or a drawer that it fits into. So boxes do not work in my style of, uh, or my workflow, my efficiency. And I also like to label, clearly label where things are at. Now I don't label uh, these kind of tools because I can easily see them, but I have stuff up top here, long stuff like my stand-up screw gun and glue gun and paint extension pole. I have those labeled so that I remember that are up there and then I label the drawers as well because uh, even though I pretty well know where everything is at it just makes it a lot easier to see hammers are here and go right to it so labeling uh, having things visible as much as possible uh, is is really important in again my workflow I keep uh, an empty bag or two here these are tool bags and I just grab those out and then I just load up what I need and that works way better than a box. Sorry, Festool, I know everybody loves your boxes, but they just don't work for me. The cabinets have evolved. This is the most refined cabinet design that I've had. There's been many designs over the years, and I actually have a previous design that we still sell because people want it. It's the Art Series, the awesome rolling toolbox. This is an, an evolution from that. What I've done is I've added uh, a strict sizing. So all of the cabinets are the same width and the same depth. And because of that, any drawer can fit in any box and any location. So this taller set of cabinets here, it's just simply a taller version of these cabinets here or this shorter cabinet here is just a shorter version. And I size my cabinets a multiple of these dados. So I don't just randomly go to a height. I will factor in about how tall I want it. And then I will uh, take these uh, dado spacings, which are exact, and I will make it a multiple of those. And in that way, this double drawer will fit in the exact same space as two of the smaller drawers. And I can also make a, even a taller drawer that's three of these so that I can move, uh, uh, relocate my drawers, reorganize my drawers without having to unload them and load them into another one. I can just simply, if I decide that I want this supply drawer to be here, I can take these two out and put it right in there. So that was a big change and that is only uh, part of this evolution and that is with the smart wood shop. It's the only plan that I have that offers that. I did not want to buy expensive hardware so I designed them so that the half inch bottoms are not only the bottoms holding everything in but they are the hardware. So I'm not buying extra hardware. But I also did not want to have to come up with some kind of locking system so that I would have to unlock them and spend money on hardware. So I designed a notch in the base of the drawer and they're all identical. It doesn't matter if it's a taller drawer or a shorter drawer, they are all identical. These notches then will drop off, drop over a, in this dado, there is a, a raised uh, portion that once that notch goes past it, it drops in and now going down the road, the drawer won't open, but a simple lift. So it's a, it's a uh, feature that doesn't cost any money to produce. It just takes time. I also designed the cabinets so that the sides are non-handed. 
<clears throat> a right side or a left side are the same. It's just a matter of turning it around. And the way I made them non-handed at this time is that the um, stop is actually fastened after the fact. So I made these up on the table saw, then I just glued them and pinned them in place and so that I could make the sides identical. So I didn't have to spend time making lefts and rights. They're all the same and they're all the same layout. So I could actually make one of these really tall, make one piece and then cut it to the lengths I want, or I could make them pre-cut them to the size and then dado them. It didn't doesn't really matter. They're, they're non-handed and that's really what I was looking for. I wanna have quite a bit of materials with me as well. Now the, the bulk materials, lumber and things like that, obviously I'll have delivered and it'll be job specific. But if, if at all possible, I want to make sure I have the nails and the screws and, and little bits and pieces of hardware so that when I'm on the job, I can stay on the job. If I have to leave the job at any point during the day, that is a massive loss in efficiency. It's an hour to go to the lumber store. I don't care how close it is. By the time you close up the job, if you're working by yourself because you don't want to leave your tools out to possibly get stolen or go missing or something uh, bad to happen, so you got to do that. Then you got to get in your vehicle, got to use gas, wear and tear on your brakes, your tires, and then go to the store, get what you need, load up, come back. So leaving the job is a huge loss in efficiency. And my goal is to be efficient so that I can make as much money as I can, but not have to charge my customer anymore. They shouldn't have to pay for my inefficiency. All of those little bits and pieces with me all the time they can also start to pile up and you not know where to find them and then you end up going to the store because you just don't know where it is so i want an efficient clear system for having those things containers they're like that old coin wallet where you know you just can see in them they're butainer and they're all different sizes and colors i get them at home depot on sale i never buy them at full price i wait till they go on sale and then i buy them by the case i've got all different kinds of screws and washers and uh, mollies and uh, bolts and again all kinds of screws i have my loads for my ram set ram set nails um, cabinet parts and pieces even a little bin with some uh, uh, sinkers i buy these by the case when I'm doing a job, but it's always nice to have a few extra, a bunch of empty ones there for future stuff, dominoes, um, just you name it, I got it. My hardware store here, and that's just the smaller ones with even other screws and things, so washers. So I just, again, try to make sure that I'm covered. If I have those, you know, little things, I just don't want to be running the store. That's the concept. Now I'm going to step back for a minute and, and talk about why it's called the smart wood shop. My last trailer was the awesome rolling toolbox, Art. When Art sold, I decided that what I wanted to do was to have everything that I had in Art, which was a bigger trailer, in a smaller trailer. I wanted to make Art, my awesome rolling toolbox, smaller and more mobile. Well, that's where we came up with the acronym, small, mobile, awesome, rolling, toolbox, smart. I hear it said often, when you're gonna get something, get the bigger one because you'll need it. And I used to believe that. But my feeling now, as I move on in life and experience is, less is more. If you can get away with a 14, do it in a 12. If you need a 12, try to do it in a 10. Go smaller. Force yourself to be efficient, to be lean. Uh, it's easier to get it on and off the job. It's just easier to take care of. It'll cost you a little less up front. So less is more. Now don't kill yourself so that you can't do the job, but push yourself to be compact and tight. Okay, so we know what the Smart Wood Shop is and we know how it got its name. We know it's about efficiency. We know it's built in, a, in an eight foot wide by 12 foot V-nose trailer. We know that it's lightweight because it's made of aluminum. It's a high quality trailer, so it's gonna stand the test of time and it's gonna be easier to pull again because it's lighter. So now let's just dive in and take a look in each drawer so you can see uh, how I'm storing the stuff, how I'm using these drawers to be efficient. My starter drawer, I put it in the premium real estate and I have uh, just a few uh, dividers in here, nothing really specific. 
but uh, I have measuring devices. Um, I have caliper, digital calipers, razor knives, and just scales and and those kind of things. It's just a it's just a kind of a collection of general purpose stuff that I tend to go for a lot and usually. Uh, as soon as I get to the job. Wrenches and sockets, I go for those quite a bit. And I'm using these dividers. Uh, these are, uh, I believe they're Rubbermaid. They're not super thick. I would say they would seem like they wouldn't be that durable, but they're so flexible that I just haven't ever broke any of these. And what I like about them is they have these little lips. And so I can kind of build out a grid and they sort of stick together or they hook together and they have a lot of different sizes. And I... Um, you can get these at the hardware store. I found them on Amazon as well. Um, my wife uses them in the kitchen uh, for her cutlery and stuff, and that's really where I got the idea of using them. Uh, I'll make sure that she puts, uh, that Chris puts these in our Amazon store if you want to find them. You can buy them kits of different sizes. The only thing I don't like is this is the longest one, and so I do have some a couple of longer wrenches that won't quite fit in them. I wish they made one size bigger. Now notice that my organization is clean and neat and you can see everything, but it's not overly precise. If you've seen some of my other videos, I have tried uh, and even recommended some dividers that will divide up the wrenches and, and put them in an order and organization. But I just found that as I use them day in and day out, that getting them to their specific location was just too specific. Uh, I find that this is just more efficient uh, to to grab, you know, I've got them, the really small ones are here, kind of the medium ones there, the larger ones here, and the really larger ones there. I do have these dividers for the sockets, um, which I find these handy because I'll grab the whole thing. But all in all, I think that this sort of loose organization is more efficient for me. I have even tried foam, where I've cut out the foam for the individual wrenches and just getting them in and out of their place. It just, for me, it wasn't the most efficient. Uh, it took more, I couldn't put as many tools in. And also it was just, again, too specific to get it to and from that spot. Now, some people are gonna love that way. And again, I just wanna point out what works for me. If, if you want more uh, specific organization or to use the foam and the cutouts, that's great as well. It's just this what works for me. I like this. It's easy to do. It's inexpensive. And, it keep, and I have the tools I need and they're easy to find. My drill bits and screw tips. I've got to actually change the name. There's no screw tips in here anymore. I used to have this drawer full of everything drill related and it was too much. I was having to dig around to, to find things. So I did a couple of things. One is I went through and I eliminated a lot of stuff. I must have had uh, four times as many hole saws. I went through, I gave a bunch to friends. I have exactly what I need now. I have a good selection of hole saws. I can easily see them get the sizes I need. And then I have the arbors for them as well. I have some specialty bits in here that I don't use that much, some masonry bits. I have my um, Faustner bits here, and then uh, some more rotor hammer bits and, and some smaller rotor hammer bits, and then large twist bits here, as well as I've got uh, one of my big handles for the drill in here. So these I don't use as much. Um, hole saws probably are what I use the most out of here, and occasionally maybe Faustner's are second. So what I did was I moved a lot of my drill bits up here and I have them in view tainers and I probably have a lot more than I need. I think maybe I can start slimming down on drill bits. It's got a lot of backup bits, a lot of backup twist bits. Um, my favorite is actually this little kit here. I have two of these. I don't remember where they came from. Uh, I haven't seen them anymore and these aren't the original bits that came in them. I really like these because I'll just, I've got two of them. I'll grab one and I try to keep them full. I'm missing a few bits in here, but uh, you know, if I grab this and my drill, I have what I need usually. Tips, I've got all the different tips. Again, I probably have way more back inventory of the different sizes, but I'm able, they're all separated out. So uh, Phillips bits and Torx bits and square drives, and then some of the longer ones and the longer nut drivers. So. I've, I'm finding, at least at this point, I'm trying it out. It's, this is a little cleaner. I can get this stuff quicker than when I had them all piled 
in this drawer. Next drawer down is called electrical supplies. It's really more of a catch-all again. I have some electrical splitters and my vacuum remote start, but for now I have um, my shims in here and my shim cutters, and I actually keep some of this uh, strips of lamb that I use those for shims as well. And then I've got a few pieces of wood. These are hardwoods and some fir. Uh, I, I keep these around because I will make screw plugs and things, so I like to keep a couple of chunks of wood with me. Next bank of drawers, uh, you can see I'm labeled here what I have. And again, the same kind of dividers. Um, you know, I, I need to maybe be more efficient with my um, wrenches here. I can, I'm, I'm thinking about even getting a kit in little packages. I've got multiples of the same size, so this is probably slows me down more than helps me, but I do have them. Then some specialty wrenches to do with uh, tools and like my knuckle bender and things like that. So I keep a lot of specialty stuff here and then my screwdrivers uh, here, small set of screwdrivers, hammers, hand saws, and squares. I've thinned this out quite a bit. Uh, got rid of a few extra hammers, but this is a pretty good setup. I don't use a lot of hand saws, but the ones I use are here, and then my framing hammer, and then um, rubber hammer, and dead blow hammer, and some pullers and such, and then my little squares. Pliers and large wrenches. Here, um, these are these bins are another bin that I like. I've had these around for a long time. I have quite a few of them. So these, again, I go to that organization where it's divided up so that I know what I have and what I uh, want to grab, but they're not so specific that I'm putting them back in a specific location. And again, this is a change from just remodeling and, and uh, reorganizing this time. I had these more separated out in in uh, dividers which again may work better for you but this is what works good for me and then my large um, pipes i have back in the back here so we got staplers tap and die got a bunch of different staplers for different needs my tap and die setup and some more specialty tools here and then i've got a couple of suction cups back there this is my hardware store we took a look at this before but essentially it's just little bins of screws and things that I've needed over time where I bought little boxes and just held on to the extra. Just nice to have the selection. My finished nails, I have just such a variety of nails and staples that I use. It's nice. Again, this was the first drawer that I started using these uh, Rubbermaid uh, cutlery um, dividers. And you can see how they're all hooked together and uh, this just helps uh, keep the, them organized and from sliding around. Sandpaper, all of my sandpaper, steel wool, all of that. I even built this little mini version of the um, of these uh, bins here. That's all that is. Score here, I've got an empty drawer. I'm just storing a few organizational aids here. These aren't being used right now, but as things go, I'll, I have more of these bins and more butaners and just uh, as things come up, I'll have it. So eff effectively, this is an empty drawer, which came about as I reorganized and gotten rid of things. Electrical, I don't do a lot of that, but I like to keep a few things around. Chisels, punches, uh, putty knife, scrapers, those kind of things. The taller side here, these drawers again will fit here. On the other side, I've just moved things around as I, as I found the way I work and as my workflow changes, I can move things around. Start out with three more empty drawers. So I have three empty ones here and one empty one on the other side. Those were full before. So I've uh, become more efficient, more lean and freed up a lot of space. And I hope I don't need it. I hope they stay empty. So I've got my edge banding and speed tape stuff here. So I have just a lot of edge banding and the tools for edge banding, my iron and my heat gun. Cabinet tools next. And so here I've got my uh, laser stuff, uh, my lasers, a couple of different lasers in here, as well as uh, my tripod for my laser, and then just various cabinet tools for drilling hinges and laying things out. Another empty one. Framing nails. I just keep enough nails uh, that if a small project comes up, I've got them. But for the most part, if I'm framing, I'm buying cases of them. And then supplies, just start with general supplies. 
I've got zip ties and trash bags and um, the fast caps for covering screws, tape, speed tape, putties, more supplies. Here I've got uh, string lines, I've got hearing protection, eye protection, first aid kit. And uh, Chris came in, I had the big metal box that I used to have serviced when I had my cruise. And she sort of went through it and put it all in this little bin, takes up a lot less space and it's right there for me. Router bits and accessories. So here is uh, my router bit storage. These have worked great. Uh, one of my projects, and you'll see the video, uh, another guy on YouTube created the most innovative router storage I've ever seen. And I want to make it for myself and I'll show you how I do that when I do it. Festool, and this has some more routing stuff because there's a lot of Festool accessories for routing and edge, edge guides and things like that. I have my jigsaw uh, accessories. I don't use them a lot, but they're there when I've got a special need. And again, more routing here. And then uh, my bench dogs and some push uh, sticks and things like that. Festool drawer is how I get away from uh, not having all the boxes. I've got my Festool stuff and I just grab out what I need. Domino supplies. So again, this is uh, for my bigger domino and all the hardware and then some of the, the extra little tools that would be in the boxes, in the uh, domino boxes. I've got them right here. It's pretty easy for me to grab out what I need, put it in my little tool bag there, and I am able to hit the road and work. Circuit saw blades, grinder wheels, and jigsaw blades. So there, you can see I've got some of the brakes for my saw back up in case it uh, trips. I've got grinder uh, wheels and such. I've got jigsaw blades, sawzall blades, and then my circular blades, dado blade, hardwood tools. And so when I'm doing hardwood flooring, I have uh, straps that are specific for that. I've got some backup nails. I've got my nailer, a couple of nailers. Uh, I have an edge saw. And just uh, this is just for installing hardwood. Coming around the corner, I have this little bit of space. I set up a shelf here and I keep uh, cleaners and oils and glues and chalk. Go all the way around the corner. I, I'm only, I only have one of my ladders here now. I keep two there. Um, one's out being used. I keep a vacuum for uh, cleaning up uh, carpets and things after I'm finishing up a job. I have uh, also uh, fall protection there for me. And then this is all back stock. So I have back stock of nails and screws. I have some plastics and then I keep some specialty tools back here. I have my PARF guide Mark II. I have a stair jig for cutting treads. I have my door um, mortising kit um, for make, you know for cutting hinges and such. And then I also have a few extra light bulbs for the trailer. So kind of back storage, I can get back in there, but I don't need to very often. Cleaning up is the most important part of a job as a contractor. So I keep plenty of brooms and vacuum ends and, and uh, dust pans and such. Uh, vacuum bags, vacuum attachments. Uh, my saw stop guard is up there. Hoses. And then I have three vacuums here as well as keep one vacuum down there. So electric cords here and my air hoses here. I also keep one garden hose. And then my tall ladder fits here and it wedges in. It does a, the dual purpose of being there for me to get it out easy, but it also keeps things in place. Set of sawhorses. I have a jacket here uh, in case I get cold on the job and I have my nail vest here as well. Air hose. Uh, my compressor does not leave the trailer. It stays in the trailer. I just run an air hose out. And if I need it longer than this 100 foot, then I have other air hoses. Power cord. This is power to the trailer. So it runs out both the air and the power go out through a hole in the floor so I can, at the end of the day, leave them run out and lock up the trailer. Compressor is underneath. I made room for a larger twin tank, which I plan to get uh, one of these days. And then on the top up here, I have a um, cross-cut sled for my saw. I have uh, my router table fence, uh, one of them up here, the, the shop made one. So I keep some tools up here. And again, label, you know, even things like this, like this uh, safe cut rule. I've got one here. It just hangs. I can grab it off and use it. And it, it uh, um, 
It doesn't need to be locked down. I've got a, a, a shorter one over on this side. This is a small tool garage. I have a larger one down there and the smaller one up here. Kind of move things around. So I do have a couple of boxes from specialty tools, lock mortising. I have my uh, moisture testing for doing hardwood. And then uh, I do have one uh, tooler kit, uh, mechanics kit from Festool. I keep that in the box. This one I use a lot. So this is one of the boxes. I just grab it and it has drill bits and all kind of stuff that uh, that's I can pretty much do anything with this in a drill. And then I have the empty tool bags I use to load up this particular tool kit that I need to get it to and from the smart wood shop onto the job. Uh, rags, of course, and then some tarps. And then in the larger tool garage, uh, currently I have my Capex miter saw. I have room. I'm going to plan on getting a framing miter saw. It'll fit there. I have my DeWalt 13-inch uh, planer, and I have my Craig jig, and a couple of more blankets for covering things, protecting things when I'm in someone's house. The all-important uh, compact bench and total station. So I have my complete working surfaces just stacked up there and uh, ready to go when I get to the job. And I have my tracks. I have all the levels I need. I have a plank. I have my sacrificial strips that I use on my workbench on every job. And I have my cabinet jack. Crown tools and my rip guides and my FSK attachments. A lot of this is crown molding stuff, uh, crown molding assistant stuff. And this is kind of a easy drawer to get to and some of the longer stuff in a video series I did. I made up, a, I showed you how to make up a bunch of crown jigs that make crown molding so easy to do and these are the jigs i just keep them so when i get to the job they're ready to go four i had all of my clamps clamped to the rafters there in the trailer and it was nice i could see what i had but i found that i was spending too much time uh loosening up take them down and then putting them back and so i decided when i was organizing and i got some free drawer space i moved them all into a drawer it is my heaviest drawer it's the hardest one to pull out but I am finding that it is the most efficient way to store and have access to my clamps on the job. My main clamps out front and on top. These quick clamps from Festool, they're pretty much my go-to clamp. I have a half a dozen of these and they pretty much cover most of my clamping needs. They work with the bench and, and, and just any kind of clamp up I need. I have a bunch of screw clamps of that same size in here. And then I have the longer screw clamps set off to the side here. Pony uh, spring clamps, uh, face frame cabinet clamps, some Craig type clamps, my um, clamps for uh, miters. And then I have my Bessie clamps and then the longer ones as well. And then I have uh, the Jorgensen's back there. So. Pretty much all my clamping needs are covered. I did get rid of probably 30, 40% of my clamps. I could probably get rid of a few more, but I do find when I get into a situation when I start clamping, it seems like clamps get eat up quite a bit. And when doing remodels, we always start by tearing things apart. So I've got my demo tools here. One other long drawer that I'm not using, so I emptied out another drawer. So I keep all my battery chargers in the trailer. I don't haul them to the job. And because I went from six battery systems to two, I have uh, five chargers for the Festool. And then I have one for the DeWalt. I'll be adding a second one for the DeWalt when I get it. And then I put my charged batteries here. And so they go from, they, co they go off the tool, they get charged, and then they go to here. I used to keep a dead battery shelf, but now I just set them all here and I make sure they get charged because I want to make sure they're always ready to go. Flashlights, work lights, radio, and then some just backstop of my pads that I use for dimensioning and then my locks and chocks for the trailer. Looking at the tools, you're going to see that a lot of these cubbies are looking pretty empty. I got rid of about 16 nail guns. I still have, I think, uh, more than a dozen. Everything is kind of organized in the way I use them. So I got my screw guns up here up front. I have my jigsaws. And then, of course, some empty bins. Uh, uh, this is a ram set. Don't need that often, but when I need it, I got it. So I have all my finished guns down below here. And then I have my um, battery track saw and then another track saw 
that's also battery operated. Now I got rid of all of my corded saws, my Mag 77, my beam saw. I held on to my Cusdy saw. This is going to be my beam saw. It's got a cord. This does a lot of specialized stuff. I like this saw. There's nothing battery operated I can do to replace it. This is the battery system that I'm going with, the DeWalt Flex Volt 60 Volt, and this will work on their 20 volt tools as well. So I've got this replace my whole hog, and it also drives the um, trailer valet. I'll be getting the worm drive version. It's not actually a worm drive, but I'll be getting the 60 volt version of that. It's got blade left and will function much as my um, mag 77 did there i'm getting a a um, 60 volt hammer half inch hammer drill um th there's a series of tools i'll go through that separate but i've got eight to ten tools that will work on this battery system so i'll be made there'll be room in these bins as i add those and, and again i'll do separate videos and and show you those. I know that was a long tour, really long for me. I know when I cut up this video, I'm gonna be chopping it up so that we jump from one thing to another and you don't have to go through the couple of hours I took to shoot this. But what I'm hoping is that it answered a lot of your questions and that you'll be able to use this video as a reference as you're looking for ideas and becoming more efficient. I hope that Either you like the whole thing and you just want to copy it exactly this way, and I'm honored if you do that. Or if you just saw one idea that will make you more efficient and more profitable, then I feel successful in sharing this with you. Well, thanks for dropping into the Smart Woodshop. I do hope this tour was helpful. I do thank you for being a subscriber. And if you're not, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll know when I drop a new video. And if you want a set of workbench plans or smart woodshop plans or the brand new um, smart crosscut, you can click on the link in the description of this video down below and go right, purchase a set and download them immediately. Thanks for dropping in. Have a great day.